Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Ah, oh, yeah, it is once again time for the Grim Leftovers program. It's Monday, January 14th, 2019, and I am Grimnir. So, so uh, this is what the third, the fourth, third or fourth show of the Grim Leftovers program, and uh, I'm glad to be here with you as always on this particular Monday night. I'm thinking uh, in the soon future to move the show up maybe an hour, maybe two, so instead of being at 7 p.m., it'll be 8 or 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, which would work better for me, I, I think. Uh, 5 p.m. It's like right in the middle of my, my afternoon, evening time here. So anyway, uh, something I'm going to think about doing uh, for you all. Anyway, let me say hi and howdy to everybody out there right now on the various websites that I partake in, whether that be freedomsnetwork.com or realliberty.org, both uh, sites affiliated uh, in some degree with reallibertymedia.com. Uh, also, those folks that uh, tune in from the, the audio stream on rlmradio.xyz, howdy to y'all. Uh, my, my, my followers on Twitter for barman underscore rlm or rlm underscore radio, uh, but both of y'all, welcome to you all. People on minds.com, uh, where else do we get out to? I, I don't know. We get out to all kinds of places. Uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't get out to Facebook unless somebody else posts it over there for us because... Well, I'm, I'm not a Facebooker. Uh, anyway, we, <laughs> I want to say hi and howdy to everybody here in the uh, RLM Real Liberty Media chat on uh, Freenode, IRC.Freenode. That's where the uh, chat applet on the front page of Real Liberty Media. Com, no, it's not on the front page anymore. But on Real Liberty Media. Com, if you uh, connect in with any of the, the chat apps, whether it be from the Grim Leftovers page or other places there on the site, it'll bring you on over to IRC.Freenode.net. And you'll be joined automatically into the chat room, pound, pound, really, really media right there. And you'll talk to all the great folks that are here today. People like Moose Girl and Kate and DC, Don Carroll, uh, Mr. Asmo, uh, Chloe and Chalcedony and Circle, you wake, Circle. Um, uh, and uh, Gooberzilla, Miss Gramsy, the wonderful Gramsy, uh, Ponder Gander, the Poxified Phone Group, and uh, Miss, Miss Rain and then our Fluke Bot. Yeah, I can't forget about the fluke bot. Oh, I think I did forget about the barman bot. Sorry, barman. Uh, you're just a bot. You don't know. Anyway, Rob Works and Rome's and Vin E, uh, the Woodman, the Phantom. Uh, man, we got all kinds of people in here today. Uh, what, what was that? <laughs> Beetle and the Cyborg Noodle. Uh, cyborg Noodle is like half bot, half noodle. All right. Uh, anyway, we got Dakota and Frumpy and Gromit and uh, some guest, 829. I don't know who that is. Um, uh, the Java Doctor, Kozu, Moe, and Nensen de Bois. Uh, Pone Sauce and the Mr. Sack Puppet and the Skittle. The Skittle. <laughs> anyway, I got a bunch of, bunch of stories lined up here for you today from uh, Days Gone By. Not that, I'm not that far Days Gone By, but still, all in all, Days Gone By. And I did go, uh, according to my plan, straight to the bottom of my list of my my save it to lead save it to read later. I can almost talk list, and uh, so I'm, I'm going to be sharing these stories with you in order as as they should have been presented uh, on the Freakers Ball had time allowed for. So y'all ready? <laughs> oh, it's a cold one today. Not not that cold. I mean, considerably warmer than probably a couple of weeks ago, but uh, it feels cold to me still. I don't, I don't know why. Anyway, I hope you're all doing fine. We're, we're two weeks into 2019 here, believe it or not, two, two weeks in, and uh, it's going. It's going. I, I was thinking uh, 2019 might be a, a year of abundance, you know, but uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of going a different way. I'm thinking it, it'll be a year of neutrality. I don't really see a lot of abundance, but I, I don't see a lot of uh, a decline either. So I, I, I think I think I think we'll be all right. I think it'll just be kind of a, a flat year, nothing great or nothing bad happening as as, as financially uh, to to myself and to y'all. Um, 
but uh, so, and that's fine. That's fine. I got I got no need. I'm not I'm not an extravagant person. I, I live a fairly frugal lifestyle, and uh, it works for me. <laughs> anyway, on to the stories here. Oh uh, yeah. So uh, here we go. Uh, from the Daily Mail on uh, uh, October nope November fifth, uh, twenty eighteen. Five thousand women line up, line up, to be whipped by priests, believing it will rid them of evil spirits or cure their sickness during a brutal ritual in India. Yeah, women and teenagers voluntarily they, they do this voluntarily. They they kneel in a long line ahead of being whipped by priests. Some uh, priests <laughs> whipping people. Some of the 5,000 participants believe it will rid them of the evil spirits or cure illness. The ritual takes place every year in a remote village in Tamil Nadu, southern India. Now, I, I, I don't know about you, and, and maybe it, I guess it's just a thing for women. Maybe men, uh, maybe there's a different method. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, it says footage, footage has emerged showing thousands of women being whipped to rid themselves of evil spirits during the brutal ceremony. Women and teenagers deal side by side in a long line, waiting to be flogged by priests during the, oh, I can't say this word, Vijayadadshami festival. <laughs> Yeah, if I got that right, I'll be amazed. Uh, which is celebrated once a year in Tamil Nadu. Uh, uh, the video shows how they are lashed one by one until they can no longer cope with the pain. This is this is a religious ceremony, mind you, a religious ceremony. <laughs> I don't know what kind of what kind of religion you're. Uh, the ceremony takes place at the ancient Sri Achapan temple. At yeah, all these Indian words, I can't say them. Uh, Bav Bav Bavathram Vallapati, <laughs> a remote a remote village situated on the border of Terichu and Nagamakal districts. Uh, the so-called salvation seekers volunteer to be whipped with some fearing they are possessed and others believing the ritual will cure sickness. So maybe you don't want to go down there if you got like a little head cold or something. Uh, maybe if you're like dying of cancer or you're, you're, you're spewing pea, uh, green split pea soup and your head's flipping 180 degrees. Yeah, maybe then, maybe then you go get whipped. But I, I think, you know, if you got like a, a tummy ache or little sniffle I would say probably best to avoid that yeah probably probably you know I, I think the flogging would be far worse than <laughs> anyway. priests dressed in traditional clothing then carry out the flogging using whips and pieces of wood they're whacking you with two by fours all right one of them a 60 year old named Chelly Lee Chelly I don't know, uh, claimed a single lash can cure them of their illness. But that's okay, we hit them multiple times. Uh, a 14-year-old girl who came voluntary to get, voluntarily to get flogged had irregular menstruation and thought the process could heal her of the problems. Yeah, instead of blood coming out where you expect it to, it'll be pouring out your back. In another case, a newly married uh, woman came to be flogged because her in-laws thought she was possessed. Her in-laws thought she was possessed. <laughs> and evil spirits would not bring luck to her new home. Evil spirits generally don't bring luck to anybody, no. Uh, but uh, just because your in-laws think you're possessed, yeah, no. Anyway, when asked if such a ritual was a crime, one of the priests says, it is the belief of the people that bring them here. If no one comes to get flogged, we won't go to their houses and ask them to come out. 
uh, to the lashing round. <laughs> That's mighty kind of you. <laughs> you're not you're not like an Avon uh, lady of pain. Uh, <laughs> Holy moly! <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say about that. All right. Now, most of y'all throughout your lives, especially you know if you're upwards in age, uh, as as myself, up in the upper fifty range. Um, you've had, since you were probably a young person, up until now, on occasion, a, a hamburger or a cheeseburger. And and you understand that it's there, they put it on your plate, you pick it up, you got the bottom bun on the bottom and the top bun on the top, and you eat it. Tastes great, right? Well, you've been doing it wrong. There's something just, you just have no clue on how to eat a hamburger. Experts reveal life-changing reason <laughs> to eat your hamburger upside down. They claim, they claim the method improves the taste. Yeah. Eating a burger without making a mess can be challenging. Well, maybe use a, a paper towel to wrap around it or something. You know, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, according to the foodies, we've been eating the guilty pleasure. I, I have no guilt in eating a hamburger. The guilty pleasure wrong all along. Simon Dukes revealed the perfect way to eat a burger without making a mess. See, first off, I don't care about the mess. Uh, second off, um, I'm not going to eat it upside down. And, and most importantly of all, there's no guilt in eating a hamburger. Anyway, <laughs> it says that eating it normally, the way uh, uh, you would normally hold a hamburger, the way it's designed to be held, the toppings fall out, the sauce ends up dripping down your hands, and you are left with melted cheese all over your fingers. The horror! The horror! But according to burger connoisseurs, we've been devouring the food all wrong all along. Here, Simon Dukes, founder of the UK website Burger Lad, revealed the perfect way to eat a burger without making a mess. And that's so important. Well, especially to the Brits. They're so uptight. I mean, at least that's the, uh, uh, the, the general thought. <laughs> Whether any of that's true or not, I don't know. But I have seen videos uh, over there in Britain of, of concerts. Rock and roll concerts. Where the, the audience is sitting there just totally at peace. Not even really bumping, their, thumping their heads or tapping their toes or moving their legs. So it's possible maybe, you know, they, they are just that reserved over there in, in Great Britain. Uh, at least in 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 London, maybe I, I I don't think the Irish or the Scots are that way, but uh, maybe the Brits, the actual Brits, are. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it says burgers are served the way they are, purely for aesthetics. I don't think so. No, somebody designed that hamburger bun that way on a purpose. Uh, the, the the crown, the top of the bun, is generally thicker than the heel. So for a better eating experience, you should flip it upside down to eat it. The crown will then hold the weight <laughs> of everything else, and there is less likelihood of it falling apart in your hands. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> I think that's enough about that. <laughs> some idiot, some foodie telling you how to eat a burger you know, what are you going to say? <laughs> I'll eat the burger any damn way I please. <laughs> and if it's that much of a problem to you, just, just, just eat it with a knife and fork. How about that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> There's that for you. Uh, now we have this from Live Science. And I, I remember pasting this into the chat room but way back there in November. Way back, yeah, ancient times. Yeah. 
Yeah, connoisseur, Rob, that's right. A person with expert knowledge or training. Uh, expert knowledge in eating? I think pretty much everybody has expert knowledge in eating. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> this from Live Science. Man dies eight years after swallowing a live slug that left him paralyzed. Idiot. I wonder if he was a connoisseur <laughs> of live slugs. Oh, in 2010, a teenage rugby player in Australia named Sam Ballard accepted an unusual dare at a party, swallowing a live garden slug. The experience left him paralyzed and with significant brain damage. I'm thinking he might have had a little brain damage prior to accepting that bet. Ballard died Sunday, uh, in a, in, not Sunday, in, in a Sydney hospital. At the age of 28, uh, that was Friday, November 2nd. This article's from November 5th. Remember, remember, by the way, November 5th, yeah. Uh, the strange and sad case occurred because, along with the slug, Ballard had swallowed a parasite called... Um, I can't pronounce the, 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 the scientific name. Commonly known as rat lungworm, which just, you know, that just doesn't sound good. Uh, which the slug likely picked up from rat droppings. Uh, rat lungworm infection can lead to bacterial meningitis, which may include symptoms such as headaches, nausea, vomiting, and abnormal sensations in the arms and legs. According to the CDC, typically rat lungworm infections get better without treatment, but in some cases, serious complications can occur and cause severe disruption of the nervous system or even death, says the CDC. And they have a link here to an article right there. It says, eight awful parasite infections that will make your skin crawl. And I know you want to read that during dinner. Uh, ah. All right. In the days after swallowing the slug, Ballard developed pains in his legs and was hospitalized after spells of persistent dizziness and vomiting. Doctors diagnosed him with a rat lungworm infection. He fell into a coma that lasted how many days? 419? No. 421? No. 420 days! 420! <laughs> After Ballard emerged from the coma, he was paralyzed from the neck down and had difficulty communicating and required round-the-clock care. Ballard's story made headlines earlier this year after medical funding used for his care and provided by the Australian government's National Disability Insurance Scheme was reduced by half. The government eventually reversed the decision following extensive media coverage and an appeal by Ballard's family. Uh, Ballard can be... Or not Ballard. People can avoid exposure to rat lung worm, worm, worm parasite by avoiding eating raw or undercooked slugs. How about just don't eat slugs? <laughs> don't eat snails. Well, snails are, uh, if pro properly prepared, they're okay. Uh, frogs, and land crabs. What the hell's a land crab? Uh, and freshwater shrimp. <laughs> According to the CDC, vegetables that may have come in contact with slugs or snails should be washed before eat being eaten raw. Yes, all vegetables should be washed before being eaten. What did they do? Who's this written for? And people preparing raw slugs or snails should be shot. I, I mean, wait, I should <laughs> should thoroughly clean their hands and utensils afterwards. <laughs> I, <laughs> raw slugs. Just eat raw slugs out of the, off the ground. Just... <laughs> Just eat that stuff. It's poisonous. Why would you eat that? Why would anybody just pick up a slug and eat it? I mean, I, 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 I could be, have been starving for however long you're allowed to starve for it before you die. And in that last moment before I die, I, I see a slug crawling on the ground in front of me. I'm going to die. I'm not going to pick that sucker up and, stick it and throw it in my mouth. No way! 
<laughs> what if it was a dead slug? Well, I, I don't know, man. Uh, I, 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 haven't, I haven't got that, I haven't wrapped my brain around about being a dead slug. Uh, but imagine if it had the rat worm, rat lung, what? Rat lung worm infection? I, I whatever. If it had it when it was alive, it probably still had it when it was dead. Uh, either way, just, just don't eat freaking slugs. Yeah, Rome's. I knew a girl who had land crabs too, and she shared them with me. <laughs> that was so kind of her. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> oh, the days of youth. <laughs> anyway, from uh, futurism dot com, a giant space laser on Earth could blast messages at alien planets. That sounds smart. Hey, we don't know who these aliens are out there, but we're going to shoot a big laser at them. That'll make them happy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Scientists have a new idea to contact alien civilizations. Build a huge laser and start blasting exoplanets with messages. Yeah. Hey, my eye just got burned out. It was a it was a laser. Can you track where it's coming from? Yeah, it's a laser beam. It goes all the way back to its source. Well, let's get on over there and kick their asses for shooting laser beams at our eyes. <laughs> we could build such a laser, according to research by MIT scientist published... Uh, in the Astrophysical Journal with technology that either exists today or requires just minor developments. The laser is more of a homing beacon than a death ray. More of. It doesn't say it's not a death ray. It's just more of a homing beacon than a death ray. Yeah. I'm sure the, the dead aliens will appreciate the significance of that little minor detail there. <laughs> a one or two megawatt laser beamed out through 30 to 45 meter telescope would be powerful enough to reach planets as far as 20,000 light years away. For reference, the star nearest our sun is Proxima Centauri. Now, 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 let me, let me just, just, let me back up a second here. They are going to be shooting a light, a laser light, through a telescope to reach a planet 20,000 light years away. Do you know how long it will take that light beam to reach that planet at the speed of light? 20,000 years! <laughs> These things... <laughs> Maybe they can find one that's only a thousand light years away. It'll only take a thousand years for that light to reach it. <laughs> but it says they have one that's four years away, so <laughs> four light years away. <laughs> um, the, the star nearest our sun, Proxima Centauri, which is just over four light years away from us. Uh, so in four years, they could get, they could hit that with a thing. Now, in order to get return mail, maybe, maybe the aliens have a better technology that's FTL or faster than light um, but the uh, humanoids of planet earth certainly do not anyway if any planet hit with our laser that happens by some infinitesimally small chance to be hosted by extraterrestrial life that had developed advanced technology its occupants would be able to look back at earth and see signs of life they're saying who are these idiots shining a goddamn light in our eyes? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's 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 the link from futurism. Uh, I also have another article here on that particular matter. Um, uh, they 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 talk about it slightly differently, not not that much differently, but from the Daily Mail, MIT researchers reveal plan for a giant laser porch light in space to make it easier for us oh wait not for us for them for aliens to find us they must have been watching different movies than i've been watching because i i'm telling you 
you you don't want to reach out and touch most of these alien races that that I've seen in the movies that I've watched because they generally they don't come here to be all good and friendly and helpful to you no no they don't they come here to do something bad whether it's take the entire planet or enslave the entire planet or just just murder the humans and keep the planet for themselves I mean, I mean, there's a, there's any number of, of different scenarios, but generally, it don't come out that well. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, yeah, basically the same article, but just uh, written by different people. Uh, uh, a pair of MIT researchers have proposed a radical method for making our presence known in the universe. A new feasibility study, the team says, it could be possible to use the laser technology as a beacon to attract the attention of alien astronomers. <laughs> much, much like a planetary scale porch light. <laughs> so, so, so they're basically they they want to look like a bunch of rednecks, uh, which uh, you know uh, I can understand. Uh, anyway, using a laser focused through a huge telescope, uh, researchers say this porch light. Uh, uh, anyway, I'll just give you the link. Like I said, it's basically the same article, same story, but uh, <laughs> humorous, humorous. Yes, indeed. A little sip of water here. I always say a sip of water and it winds up being a nice gulp. Okay. Now y'all y'all been studying up on your, your on your TASS newspaper, the Russian news agency TASS. <laughs> I have an article here for you from them. Stuff that the United States government probably doesn't want you to know. The IAEA, that's the Inter International Atomic Energy Agency, agency association, something like that. International Atomic Energy A holes uh, confirm that Iran fulfills its nuclear deal, according to the Russia's envoy. Tension, and this article is from November 6, 2018. Uh, tensions over Iran's nuclear program have been running high since the U.S. unilaterally withdrew, withdrew from the 2015 JCPOA, which is uh, some kind of treaty. Um, Let's see if it spells it out down here somewhere. Yes, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JCPOA. <laughs> anyway, from Vienna, November 6th, TASS, the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the UN nuclear watchdog that confirms that Tehran is meeting its commitments under the JCPOA on its nuclear program. You, you probably haven't heard this. It, it's probably not been available information in any of the clap here in the United States, the corporate lame ass propaganda. Uh, two S's, Rob, works, so you have to have a, they all seriously suck or something. Um, T-A-S-S. -S. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, you probably haven't heard on CNN or Fox News or NBC or ABC or CBS uh, any of them coming out and saying, yeah, you know, uh, the, the Iranians are doing exactly what we said, so there's there's no reason there's no reason for us to, to, to keep on sanctioning them and threatening them and doing bad things to them. No, you haven't heard that on the on the US corporate lame ass propaganda. The what what do they call it? Mainstream media? Yeah. It's not mainstream, it's not media. It's it's corporate lame ass propaganda. That's what it is. It's the clap. <laughs> anyway, as we go on, we have recently hashed this issue over with the IAEA's secretariat, and once again, they confirmed to us that Iran irreproachably meets its commitments. The agency does not have any complaints about it. Yulanov said when, they, when asked about the agency's assessment and further reports, on the JCPOA's implementation amid the new wave of U.S. sanctions. Tensions over Iran's nuclear program have been running high since the United States unilaterally withdrew from the 2015 JCPOA, 
Iran and five what were five world powers, Russia, the UK, China, France, and Germany, plan to observe the deal. The IAEA emphasized in its reports earlier that Iran was committed to the agreement and its nuclear activity was under strict control and subject to thorough checks. The agency encouraged Tehran to keep complying with the nuclear deal. Well, that's what we're doing. You don't have to urge us. We're, we're going to do it. We're, we've been doing it. You checked us out multiple times, and we are in compliance with your shit. They all suck souls. Well, that's true, too. Uh, I, whatever. T-A-S-S. -S. They, 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 they. <laughs> yes, they all seriously suck soul shit. <laughs> they all suck shit. I don't know. What, however you want to say that. that that's great. T-A-S-S. -S, they all suck. Yes, indeed. All right. <laughs> Oh, all right. Uh, Rome's put out a link here in the chat. The, the lawsuit. Columbus doctor intentionally gave women lethal doses of fentanyl. Hey, that's that's what they do there in the uh, medical industrial complex. They kill more people than anything. You know, everybody's talking about how there's going to be all these opioid deaths, but the doctors, <laughs> the medical industrial complex, the pharmaceutical companies. You want to talk about the, the biggest cause of death? All right. Anyway, from Amoland.com, November 5th, 2018. Home resident killed by Maryland police trying to confiscate his guns. Yep. Anne Arundel County, Maryland. FoxBaltimore.com is reporting that a Maryland resident was killed by police as they tried to enforce a red flag gun confiscation order at 5.17 a.m. in the morning of Monday, November 5th, 2018. Information is incomplete at this time, uh, but according, according to Fox Baltimore, Anne Arundel County Police are investigating an officer-involved shooting that occurred Monday morning in Ferndale. Police spokesman Jacqueline Davis said officers responded to a 12103 Linwood Avenue at 5.15 a.m. to serve an emergency risk protective order, also known as the Red Flag Order. Now, I don't know about you, but I tell you what, somebody comes pounding on my door at 5.15 a.m., they can expect to be greeted by a shotgun. <laughs> but this man answered the door, armed with a handgun, and a struggle ensued as officers attempted to disarm the man. Well, what else is he going to do? Somebody comes pounding on your door at 5 o'clock in the freaking morning. You're going to assume somebody's trying to do a breaking and entering. And you're going to get up, and you're going to have your gun in hand, and you are going to go to the door. Pigs see that, and they are going to do everything they can to take you down. Not short, and including killing you. During the struggle, the man's handgun discharged, and police fired shots, Davis said. Davis says, says no Anne Arundel County officers were injured. Oh, isn't that nice for them? The suspect was pronounced dead on the scene. Apparently, Maryland Governor Hogan disregarded veto requests and signed the red flag bill, HB 1302, in the spring of 2018. Under that bill, as it became law, virtually anyone can ask any law enforcement officer to file an ex parte partition with a state district court judge or commissioner and allege that the gun owner poses an immediate danger to himself, herself, or others because, and only because, he or she possesses firearms. If the court issues the order, which almost for certain they will, the police can show up on the doorstep and seize the person's far firearms without notice or warning. Anybody got a problem with somebody at work, you cut somebody off in traffic, 
Uh, maybe you, you, you beat somebody at card game, and, and they just they just don't like you. They want to get back at you. Uh, some maybe you got a, a kid uh, that 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 you pissed him off by grounding him for something, and and they 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 can anybody for any reason for no reason can ask for one of these red flag uh, red flag bill things to be sent out. What's it, what's it called again? Red red flag order. Uh, red flag gun confiscation order to be pointed at you. And they're going to come out and they're going to try and take your guns. And if you resist in any manner, you're going to wind up like this guy, dead on your freaking doorstep. All it takes is a family member, dating partner, a roommate, anybody, to claim that someone is a danger to themselves or to others, to have their it says here Second Amendment rights, but I'm just going to say your natural right to self-preservation stripped away by a secret court hearing. Right, right advocates predicted that this new, this new movement of taking your rights with red flag orders might have deadly consequences. Well, there's one already and called for vetoes of the law. But of course, they wanted the law, so they were not going to veto that law. And it, it, it passed through their system without a problem. So, there you have it. I, yeah, there you have it. There you have it. All right. Jail guards. This is um, the freethoughtproject.com from November 6th. Jail. You're supposed to be safe in jail, aren't you? Well, more or less, kind of, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know. Anyway, jail guards stand idly by as mentally ill woman gouges out her own eyeball and swallows it. The woman was diagnosed as psychotic in jail and was then ignored as she screamed for help and eventually allowed to gouge out her own eyeball and eat it. I think this diagnosis could have been on there. Uh, whether psychotic or just some other mental issue, I, I, I don't know, but um, yeah. Chino, California. In a testament to the neglect and abuse suffered by inmates at the hands of police, a woman in Chino, California, in dire need of medical attention for a mental health problem, was ignored until she literally ripped her out her own eye, eyeball and swallowed it. Now, I I would bet you, and I, I I have no proof, I have no evidence of this, but I would bet you that when mealtime came around, after this this woman had ripped out her own eyeball and swallowed it, they didn't give her any food because they say, hey, you already ate. <laughs> anyway, every 15 minutes or four hours straight, the woman had screaming fits were ignored repeatedly. This neglect by jail staff was in spite of the fact that the woman was admitted uh, and known to be a psychotic. After four hours of being ignored, the woman fell to the ground and began prying her eyeball from her skull. She was able to remove the entire eyeball and swallow before the guards paid any attention. Ugh. Detailing the immense depth of the problems within the jail system in Chino, well, everywhere, uh, Golding explained, This group has created a biased and inaccurately positive picture of what is actually a troubled system of care. Well, it's obviously not a system of care. It's a system of incarceration. There's no care involved. The disturbing part is that the woman was evaluated by a psychologist, deemed psychotic, and then thrown into a cage with everyone else without any help. Now, don't they normally take the, what they consider the mentally ill down to a separate facility that they deal with the mentally ill? Is, I thought that was how it was. Isn't that how they depict it on those stupid TV cop shows? Anyway, had she been administered proper medication, she may still have her eye today. Uh, the, the tragedy is that any competent psychiatric physician or general medical physician would have medicated the patient 
and likely the patient's eye would still be in her head rather than uh, working its way through her colon. Uh, naturally, the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation not only denied any and all allegations of incompetence, but they issued a counterstatement slamming Golding's report. The department strongly denies with this individual's allegations and looks forward to a fair and thorough review and hearing of all the facts, the spokeswoman for the CDCR said. We have worked closely with lawyers representing prisoners as well as the court, court appointment monitors the hell is that? Uh, for many years to improve the mental health of inmates. And our dedicated and well-trained staff will continue to provide appropriate care and treatment. And if they want to eat their own eyeballs, that's up to them. <laughs> Sadly, this case is just a symptom, a symptom of a much larger problem, stemming from the police force uh, being used to handle problems with uh, mental illness. All too often, people in need of dire mental health keep get get <laughs> dang cat outside meowing at me. Uh, health, <laughs> health, get the police instead. Many times, instead of receiving help, they are arrested, beaten, shot, or killed. Or all of the above. They get arrested, then they get beaten, then they get shot, and then they get killed. That's a standard operating procedure for the police. Oh. Anyway, that, that's it, man. Uh, these, these places... These places are, are, are torturous hell holes. Torturous hell holes. Hey, Circle! Circleine, join us here in the chat room. Right. An article from Fanatical Futurist. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what to make of this yet. I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not positive on this. This is on the 30th of November, 2016, so it's, it's really quite the old article, but I came across it sometime this particular November and saved it to my list. Uh, the November of 2018, I found it. Anyway. Accidental discovery pauses life and puts embryos into suspended animation. Interesting. So, like, if a, if a woman got pregnant and said, well, I'd like to have a baby, but not quite yet. Can, can you throw this thing on pause for me? Hmm. Anyway, uh, it says, uh, why this matters in brief. Being able to put embryos, cells, organisms, and people into suspended animation could have a significant impact on anti-aging cancer. This thing keeps hiding on me. I can't even read the rest of it there. Uh, and, and other stuff. Oh, cancer treatments, IVF, and space travel. Space travel? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, and, you know, it would also be great. No, never mind. <laughs> I don't need to go there. But I have a I have a great a great idea for a usage of this putting people on pause thing. <laughs> I'm not gonna share it with you. A new study by researchers at UCSF, published in Nature this week or that week, has shown for the first time that it's possible to pause life. Pause pause button for life. The researchers found that the drugs that inhibit the activity of a master regulator of cell growth called MTOR can put early stage mouse embryos called blastocysts into a stable and reversible state of suspended animation. Where's the remote control already? Is it a universal remote? Can I just point it at anybody and put them on pause? <laughs> Normally, blastocysts only last a few days or two, uh, max, in the lab, and, but blastocysts treated with MTOR inhibitors can survive uh, up to at least four weeks. Up to at least four weeks. Is it going redundant there, or what, man? It's either up to or at least. It's not up to at least. 
Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> These things trip me up when I'm reading, and I, and I have to yell at them. Anyway, uh, it was, it, that was according to the study's lead author, uh, Aiden Bullitt Karashalugu, uh, postdoctoral researcher at UCSF. Uh, during this study, Blutkar Shlugu and his team were able to show that that the paused embryos could quickly resume normal growth when uh, MTOR inhibitors were removed, and that they developed into healthy mice if implanted back into the recipient mother. The recipient mother? The original mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah these people. Anyway, the discovery was a surprise to the researchers, who intended to study how MTOR inhibit, inhibiting drugs slow cell growth in blastocysts and not to find a way to put in the embryos into suspended animation. It was completely surprising. We were standing around in the tissue culture room scratching our heads. That's probably not a good idea to do it in, in a tissue culture room. I, I mean, who knows what's coming off your heads as you're scratching your heads in the tissue culture room. You probably, uh, you know, you guys... Never mind. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't be scratching your heads in there and saying, wow, what do we make of this? Um, uh, to put it in perspective, mouse pregnancies only last about 20 days. So 30, uh, the 30 day old paused embryo we were seeing would have been pups around, approaching weaning already if they had been allowed to develop normally. Uh, yeah, grammar Nazi. I, 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 I know, Rob. But it just, it, you know, when you're reading something and, and, the, and, and there's stuff in there that just, it just doesn't fit or it's just weird or wrong and it, it just trips me up. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> further experiments then demonstrated that the MTOR inhibitors could also put cultured embryonic mouse stem cells, which are derived from the blastostitch, blastocyst stage embryo, that's a difficult word, blastocyst, uh, stage embryo, into suspended animation. The drugs appear to act by reducing some gene activity across most of the mice's genome. Uh, the researchers tested a number of different MTOR inhibitors and found that the most effective was a new synthetic drug called RAPA-Link or RAPA-Link. This is a bad name for a drug that puts somebody in pause. You don't want to have a drug that puts somebody in pause named Rapa Link. <laughs> because you can only imagine what that might be used for. Um, anyway. Uh, our dormant blastocysts were eventually dying when they uh, ran, or eventually dying when they ran out of some of the essential metabolite within them. If we could supply those limiting nutrients in the culture medium, we should be able to, to sustain them even longer. We just don't know exactly what they need yet. Well, it's okay. You guys are crazy murderous types. I'm sure you'll figure it out in the long run. And, you know, you got to break a few eggs, as they say, right? Or kill a few live animals. Uh-huh. Oh, God. More water. <laughs> All right. Some of you, most of y'all probably heard about this already, but I, it was in my list still. I don't know how it didn't, it didn't get shared or maybe it just got stuck in my list. I, I, I just... Um, found it interesting and thought I'd share. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't understand either how some of these, uh, you know, these, these people are well-educated. Uh, you would assume they're scientists. and uh, they, they should know how to form a sentence. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, from Reason back on November 6, 2018. And, 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 I, and I still don't quite understand it, but I'm going to share it with you. Maybe maybe you can explain it to me. Long time no see is considered offensive language. Non-inclusive language at Colorado State University. Viewed as derogatory to those of Asian descent. 
Long time, no see. I, I, I'm not seeing how that's anti-Asian or derogatory towards Asians, but uh, apparently Colorado State, CSU, uh, they, they do. At least the administrators have de designated the common greeting, long time no see, as non-inclusive language. That's according to student Katrina Liebe, who writes for the campus paper, the Rocky Mountain Collegian. Liebe met with Zahara al Saloum, director of the director of diversity and inclusion, director of diversity and inclusion, at the college. <laughs> director of diversity and inclusion. Huh. Anyway, who showed her a list of terms and phrases considered contrary to the university's mission on fostering inclusion. Fostering inclusion. <laughs> All right. One of these phrases was long time no see, which is viewed as derogatory towards those of Asian descent. Libby also noted the administrators discouraged the use of you guys in favor of y'all, which is gender neutral. <laughs> Use guys. <laughs> nope, nope. New York, New York is bad. The South is good. Use guys no longer works, but y'all, y'all, yeah, yeah, it works, which is gender neutral and ungrammatical. Ungrammatical? Well, grammatically incorrect, I would say. It's not ungrammatical. But this uh, is apparently less of a concern. Her column does not claim that the administrators force students to use the gender-neutral terminology, just that such terminology is preferred. Al Saloum did not respond to a request for comment. The college fixes, which is a newspaper there, I guess, uh, Jennifer Cabany sees this as an example of campus political correctness run amok. Run amok! <laughs> I'm having a hard time disagreeing. I can't imagine anyone reading radical subtext into a long time and no see, unless they have already been instructed to look for it. And the, the greetings Wikipedia page raises the possibility that it is of Chinese or Native American origin, but an NPR article from 2014 says the phrase is so widespread it's impossible to tell its origin. It's no wonder that policing microaggressions... <laughs> Where's the aggression in long time no see? <laughs> anyway, policing microaggressions might actually backfire. As some research has shown, many people who are supposedly impugned by a given slight fail to register it as offensive. When it is to what is to be gained by insisting that they should find it offensive, and that people who persist in using the term are aggressing against them in some way. Aggressing, long time. No C. I, 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 they don't explain why it's aggressive, uh, how it's related to Asians. <laughs> there's no, there's no explanation whatsoever. It's just that this term, this phrase, something that everybody says all the time. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people say it to a lot of other people on a regular basis. That somehow. This is aggressive, micro-aggressive, although not, not quite actually really aggressive. Uh, all right, I, I was, I was going to stop there because that's all I had put in my list, but I'll give you one more. Uh, just since we're here and i got a few extra minutes, I, I got through those a little bit quicker than I thought I might. Um, so we'll give you one more here from Tech Dirt, from the Grifters Everywhere Department. Grifters, look it up. <laughs> this is on uh, uh, November 8th, 2018. 
new acting attorney general part of a patent scam company recently shut down by the FTC and fined millions. You got that? The new, the newly appointed man at that point in time is part of a company that used that was running patent scams. Patent scams. As you've certainly heard by now, yesterday, uh, which would have been November 7th, F President Trump forced out Attorney General Jeff Sessions and at least for now installed Sessions Chief of Staff Matthew Whitaker to be the acting Attorney General. So who the hell is Matthew Whitaker? Well, er Eric Eric Bollert, whoever he is, summed it up his history succinctly on Twitter. For the last 10 years, Matt Whitaker was a failed would-be Iowa politician practicing private law. In August 2017, he wrote CNN column saying Mueller was on a witch hunt. Four weeks later, he was appointed Sessions Chief of Staff. One year later, he's acting Attorney General. <laughs> Fascinating. But getting even closer to the usual stuff that, that we cover on Tech Dirt, it also appears that Whitaker played a key role in patent promotion scam company that was recently fined millions of dollars by the FTC. <coughs> Excuse me. And Whitaker apparently used his former job as an assistant to U.S. Attorney to try and intimidate unhappy customer of his firm away from filing a better business bureau complaint. In other words, not only is Whitaker associated with a scammy patent marketing company, but also abused his former title in an effort to create a chilling effect on someone's speech. Yeah, that's the guy that needs to be Attorney General. <laughs> As if anybody needs to have that job. The, the Miami New Times had a big article last year about the scam, that was World Patent Marketing, which of course was based in Florida. Why are so many of these scams based in Florida? Uh, there are a bunch of these kinds of firms out there that prey on unsophisticated individuals who are able to patent something more, or more frequently, think that they have something worth patenting. In this case, the Miami New Times describes the WPM's way of working. Thousands of would-be inventors like Masty were ripped off in the scheme, the feds allege. Padded posterior enhancing genes, uh, fruit crossbred with marijuana, and a urinal shield to catch splatter. Each one was sure to be a bestseller. The company promised inventors if they paid the firm's ex expertise in bringing ideas to the market. In reality, the firm's illustrious board, which included big names such as time travel, time travel scientist, Ronald Mallett and Florida International University Professor Aileen Marti simply took cash without ever meeting or reviewing any pitches. Some of the supposed innovations, uh, the green, green company Greenlit, already existed, so patent applications were regularly denied. And despite the many success stories featured on its website, virtually none of the firm's clients ever made any money. As millions poured in, the firm's tough-talking CEO, Scott J. Cooper, boasted about trips to remote islands on his yacht and lashed out in expletive-laden tirades at inventors who complained. In screeds posted online and emailed to customers, the company bragged about its security team composed of ex-Israeli special forces trained in Krav Maga and threatened critics with lawsuits and worse. Yeah, you want this guy as the Attorney General of the U.S. of A. Oh, yeah! <laughs> well, he fits right in. Totally corrupt. All right, folks. <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, th this has been Grim Leftovers with Grim Nero. That's me. And I'll be back again next Monday with another edition of Grim Leftovers right here on RLM Radio. 
Yes, indeed. Uh, tomorrow on RLM Radio, we have uh, Flash at 1 p.m. Eastern. I, I do all these from memory, so I, I should be able to get them right. <laughs> uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern uh, is, is Flash in a perfect world. And then on a Wednesday uh, on RLM Radio is Grammy Mary and Grammy's Rocket Chair at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, which is it's just, uh, it's a great show. It's a great show. So, so is Flash. Flash show is a great show, too. And then on Thursday, another Flash show, uh, which is at 7 p.m. Eastern. Wait, 6 p.m. Eastern. 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and, and it's called 20% Off. And he's, he's into his third week now, I think. So, yeah, you might want to check out some of the podcasts on that that he's already done. And uh, tune in for that show, for sure. Um, Grammy will not be on on Friday night, but myself and the Moose Girl, at least myself, will be on with either Freaker's Ball or Balls to the Wall. One of the two, doesn't matter either way, 11 p.m. Eastern, RLM Radio, and also, of course, on the video show page here, uh, Freaker's Ball show page. Uh, And then uh, Saturday is another Flash show, Flash doing three shows. What a man. He is the dude. Uh, anyways, it does the dork table on Saturdays at noon Eastern. So uh, tune in for that. And then Saturday or Sunday is uh, me at noon Eastern playing some blues for y'all. It's just, I don't, I don't talk during the show. I just play blues for three hours. And it's cool. We play trivia here in the chat. It's fun. It's a good time. And then and then, and then on uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon o'clock Pacific right here, is, is which immediately follows my blues show, is Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. Opening up the big old can of whoop ass, trying to get them crickets to do something other than sit there and just chirp like morons. Yeah. And that, that about covers the lineup here on RLM Radio. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, and um, have yourselves a great week. Talk to y'all later. Peace. <laughs>